Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Before I found those very strange locations in Brazil and correlated them to other sites around the world, I had a video all set to do for you guys regarding a brand new location in Antarctica. It's very close to a recent location that we discovered a stargate and a cave and different structures that are clearly evidence, clearly evidence of something going on actively on this continent right now that is not modern man. Something very, very different is going on. Now, in today's locations, and real quick as an aside, um, the reason I was looking at Brazil to begin with was... I followed very closely the election of Jair Bolsonaro and his offer to D.C. for the use of Alcantara. Um, Alcantara, back in the 80s, it was actually built in the 80s, late 80s and 90s, was a very, very important Air Force base for the Brazilians. They wouldn't let it go f unless there was some huge reason, some giant benefit to them. And I'm not sure what that is, but... We'll get back to that, and that's why I was looking around up there. If, when you look at Antarctica on Google Earth Pro, and you orient, this is called the Antarctic Peninsula, up at the 12 o'clock, the place that we're going to be looking at is going to be, we were starting down here recently around the 6.30, 7 o'clock region. We're going to continue to move clockwise, and we're going to be, we were in a place called the Mertz Ninnis Valley. We're going to be looking at a place now called the Terra Nova Canyon. Now, I didn't name that that. They did. Um, from high above, you'll see what they call the George V Coast. And there are, I guess if you really wanted to um, really lay it out, there are going to be four different locations. Right here it is. Just around from the George V Coast. If you look for, it'll say the Terra Nova Canyon. It'll also say the Lazarev Mountains. This is the area we're looking at. Now, I generally have three areas um, outlined here. One here, um, one here, 
And I'm going to count this as one right here, basically just because there's only three sites. This up here is just a reference mark for me. Um, let's go ahead and let's start with this. Now, in other areas and other regions, I've seen structures like this where it honestly looks like something from under the ice just punched up through and created this fracturing, this, this cratering. And as you can see all around this, this ice and snow is perfectly even and smooth, but just at the base of this mountain, it literally looks like something ballistic came up from underneath and punched a hole. And you can see the cracks here, the cracks here. But here's where it gets really strange with this one. At the very base of it, there looks like there's an opening. Now I'm going to zoom in here, and one of the reasons, for those of you that wonder why I do the, the technique of filming the screen with a, a different camera, it gives me three capabilities I wouldn't have otherwise. I can use the zoom that's on the screen itself, like I'm doing here, or I can physically move the camera closer to the screen, or I can also use the zoom that's on the camera filming the screen. So it gives me three different techniques I can use that I wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to see this right above my cursor until I zoom in. Look right here. Now guys, that looks like the perfect description of a gray alien. You've got two very large, dark openings. You have the large white head. You have what clearly looks like a mouth and a jaw. And from satellite level, there's something very weird here. I don't have all of this. This picture isn't complete. But guys, that's definitely some type of a head or skull structure right here. And once again, would be unavailable if I tried to do just screen zoom, wouldn't be able to do it. I've had to physically move the camera, use the zoom on this camera and the zoom on the screen to get this to show up. Very, very odd. And of course, I'll give you all of these locations like I do normally down in the description. You can find them for yourself. Google Earth Pro, this is updated 2019 imagery. There are things being out, and I'm going to have to go back through all of my old um, locations and find if there's anything new. A lot of the stuff that I had been looking at before was years old. All right. Once again, down here, same thing. We see evidence of activity and we're going to use this technique once again. Now here, this just looks like a just strange, um, divot in the ice or crack or some type of a, you know, maybe a crevasse. But when you zoom in, you can clearly see the head, the long neck, and the body. We have talked about this before multiple times in recently. Let me move this around so I can have my own lettering out of the way. There we go. Guys, that looks like the body of an elasmosaur. And we've shown this multiple times. I've done probably four different videos at different locations where you can see clearly evidence of giant sea creatures, whether they're alive, whether they've been just pre preserved in the ice and the recent heavy melting has uncovered them. It's there. And we are about as close as we can get on the zoom. And it's pretty much full screen at this point. So once again, I don't think this is something you can miss. Up here, not quite as definitive, but still, this uh, looks very strangely constructed right here. Some type of a bay, entry, exit bay. And there's different structures and things around it that look not like they would just be something you would uh, expect to see. If it was just rock, ice, snow, and wind. Once again, we see what looks like coming out of the ice. 
some type of the bow type of a bow of a ship, I guess. And let me show this just so we can have a, a reference. This is what the ice and snow looks like in this region. It has somewhat of a, a model feature to it. So any disturbance, you'll be able to see the difference. Now look in this valley right here in between these two areas. See how it's nice and even and perfect here? Nice and even and perfect here? This is evidence of activity. All sorts of different types of tracks of something. It's too uneven, too random to be just a figment of the wind because in the region, as we can see, that's what normal looks like. That's tracks. That's definitely activity, something going on in this ridge right here. And there's more over here. And we do strangely see what look like cave openings. And when you zoom in, sometimes, I don't think sometimes Google even knows what they have. Right here is something. I don't know what it is. But at this zoom level, even with the highest definition, you're not going to get super, super clear images. All right, so let's get out of that real quick, and let's go over to, where were we? Okay, once again, up here. Now, I've even had to circle this, because it's at such... A close level. Now, do you see how we have this ice ridge here? But then, strangely enough, we have this very circular um, top. This is not something the ice and snow and wind would allow to exist for very long. But when you look in real close, right here, you can see clearly embedded in the rock, it looks like a saucer crash site that's been here for quite some time. And you can see some changes in the rock in the region, color-wise. And the last place I guess we'll go on this journey today is over here. And over here, there's quite a few things. And this kind of correlates to what I've been talking about with the ice melt down here. This is what scientists, what's terrifying the climate scientists right now do you see right up next to the shore do you see these pools what's happening is warm water is getting all the way underneath these glaciers the sea ice and coming right up to the shore and melting the glaciers right where they meet right where they meet the sea this is the break off that's going to cause these uh, glaciers the glaciers that are over the land to collapse into the sea. See, the people that say, well, the ice that's already there can't contribute to sea level rise, you're right. But when they go away, when they break off and they leave and the ice, the super heavy thick ice, has nothing holding it back, that's when things are going to really, really start to get out of control. Now, this is more evidence, kind of boring evidence. These are ancient trails and footpaths. You can see clearly here, and let me zoom out just a little bit to get better focus. Especially right up here. You can see how this line goes here and this line goes here. Some people say, oh, that's just evidence of the, the melting of the ice. It would, it would be striated in one direction. There wouldn't be perpendicular angles like this. These clearly were ancient paths and um, trails used by the ancient inhabitants of Antarctica to get down to the sea. And the reason I brought that up is I know a lot of you have seen the um, Discovery and Nat Geo and History 
sites where they show what happens when a polar bear pulls a seal up through the ice and kills it. I know there are no polar bears in Antarctica. Okay? Just to be very clear. But I want you to tell me what you think this site is. Here we have an area of snow that is clearly discolored in a brownish reddish way. And here we have what looks like something coming up through the water, through the ice, a pool of water right next to it. If there are living dinosaurs, what we would call for lack of a better term, down there, and they are actively hunting, they may have certain occasion at times to get up onto the ice. That we haven't caught them yet probably is no giant surprise. But this is evidence of something going on. This is, this is, the, because this is how it turns up in the snow. Anybody who's ever been a hunter knows this. What happens to blood after half a day on the snow? It turns brown from any distance. Once it's been exposed to the air, very fresh, of course, is, you know, the bright red that we've shown. But there are, guys, look at this right here real quick and tell me that you don't think this is something that was created. 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, coming straight down here. How in the world would this end up looking like this if it wasn't something that perhaps was created by ancient um, inhabitants just for better access to the sea, maybe? To get out into deeper water? If this at one time were a river? Even from this distance above, and we're at high altitude 5,000 feet right now, you can see that this is clearly hand of man. Or hand of intelligence. There's another location here. I didn't even mark it, but as you can see, at one time this looks like this was a port. This is some type of a harbor. It's just been aged by time. And there was one other location, I think, with footpaths, and it's over here. Here we go. And you can see these down along the water. And this would make sense. The sea would have been very, very important to these people. It would have been their lifeblood. It's also what makes those um, locations out in the middle of Brazil so strange. Because the native inhabitants of Brazil, almost all of their settlements are right by rivers. Right very near and close to rivers. What we showed up in Brazil, nowhere near water. And that's the number one priority down there for the uh, the natives. Be near a river. Be near a place where you can fish, where you can wash, where you can do all of the things that you need to do that you wouldn't be able to do in the middle of the jungle. And you can, and here's another really big piece of damning evidence. Do you see how there's snow cover here? And yet, even through the snow cover, you can see the trails. that follow along the ridges. So, anyway, 16 minutes, that's probably enough to bore you with for a while. So, like I said, I'll give you this general location, but pretty clear evidence that something's going on. Like, share, subscribe. Would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have 
Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tech they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond, Crimson King. Isn't the land of sight off-world, sir?